Hello everyone, my name is Ron with AnsweringLDSCritics.com and I am a lifelong member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now, like so many of you in recent years, I have seen faithful members of our faith step away from the church based on negative information they are hearing about the church and church history and it breaks my heart. Those who are suffering with a faith crisis likely got their information from the hordes of negativity published by our critics. Even if they heard information from a friend or a family member, the original source of the information at some point was likely a critic. So I decided to investigate those uh, who these critics are and why they do what they do. Now at the onset, I want to be clear that critics need our love and our prayers. While I am pretty direct about their methods and their organizations, I never target an individual by name. My goal isn't to slander our critics personally, that's not what our Savior would do. But I think he would condemn actions, and members of the church need to understand the critics' strategies and motivation, because in doing so, we're going to be less likely to take their information at face value. So I want first to provide this paragraph that summarizes how our critics operate in a nutshell, and then I'll afterwards provide some documented evidence. LDS critics start by publishing massive volumes of negative and many times untrue videos and podcasts about the church, its leaders, or its history that cause trusting members to feel betrayed by the church and that everything they have been taught was a lie. They are under understandably confused, angry, and overwhelmed by the sheer volume of information. Then in an act of self-appointed heroism, the critic runs to the rescue with compassionate offers of help by pushing even more videos, which is more money, offering conferences and seminars, which makes them more money, and providing one-on-one -on -one coaching, again, more money. All the while, they're soliciting their new recruits for donations, again, more money, and selling ex-Mormon products, more money. They convince their victims they are better off without the oppression of Mormonism, leaving the member with gut-wrenching lost faith and strained family relationships. The member steps away from the church and shares the misinformation with others, which starts the self-perpetuating cycle all over again. Now this is a bold statement about our critics, but this video will show conclusive evidence that critics are indeed helping to facilitate a faith crisis in members and then profiting from the help that they offer. How do we know this? Well, the answer is right in front of us. It's all in the numbers. First of all, let's talk about Mormon stories. Mormon Stories Foundation, other, otherwise known as uh, Open Stories, is the most prominent of LDS critics, and they are a nonprofit organization called a 501c3. The U.S. government requires all nonprofit organizations to file an IRS Form 990 every year, which is made available to the general public. These forms contain important information, including how much the organization makes and what salaries are paid and to whom. Mormon Stories 990s are available from 2013 to 2021. This here is the 990 for 2021. The IRS has not published 990 information for 2022 or 2023 yet, so this is the most recent form available. Notice though that their revenue, even from two years ago, was $750,868 almost three quarters of a million dollars. One important way that they make money is through do donations. So they very actively solicit donations both on their YouTube channels and their website. As you can see on their website homepage, there are at least four different places to donate just on this one page alone. In addition, almost all of their YouTube vid videos are listed as fundraisers as you can see here. Bottom line, Mormon Stories has produced over 1,600 videos on YouTube from that organization alone, comprising over 65 million views. And that only accounts for YouTube. They disseminate their information through TikTok, which has 235,000 followers, Instagram, where they have 29,000 followers, and Facebook, where they have 83,000 followers. So the overall number of negative videos on social media from just this one organization is staggering. So, is it working to publish this much negative information about the church? 
Is it impacting the minds of members? Is it destroying faith? Well, based on the revenue gains for Mormon stories over the last eight years, it is definitely working. This is a summary of contributions for Mormon stories from 2013 to 2021. All of this data comes from the critics themselves as reported to the IRS. Now this is public information, so if you doubt these numbers, I invite you to look them up yourself online to verify. It's easy to find. As you can see, the average percent increase in their contributions for the eight years from 2013 to 2021 was 26 percent. Although the IRS has not yet released data for 2022 or 2023, we can easily estimate their contributions by applying the average growth rate of 26 percent. You can see here they are on track to make nearly $1.2 million in 2023. Okay, so Mormon Stories is making a lot of money in contributions, but they are a nonprofit, so they're just using that money to help people in a faith crisis, right? Well, not so much. While the nonprofit label implies that no one is personally profiting pr from proceeds or donations, the reality is the board of directors of any nonprofit entity may grant the CEO a raise of any amount if they so choose. In 2021, the CEO of Mormon Stories' salary was $230,000 a year with an additional $33,115 in compensation. Based on an average increase, based on their his average increase rates, by 2023, this CEO's salary will have more than tripled since 2013. And keep in mind, his salary is largely funded by donations from people who are experiencing or who have experienced emotional trauma. So this CEO received a raise seven out of eight years between 2013 to 2021. And in 2018, as you can see here, his salary nearly doubled. In February of 2022, the Salt Lake Tribune did a story on the Mormon Stories CEO and his salary. There was two interesting quotes from that report. First, yearly revenues jumped by 67% in the aftermath of Mormon Stories podcaster, they named his name, uh, 2015 excommunication from the LDS Church tax form show. Uh, the CEO annual compensation ballooned more than 700 percent, according to nonprofit tax reports, swelling from 27,429 in 2010 to 236,021 dollars in 2019. That six-figure salary made up 60 percent of the group's total earnings from donors and podcast revenues. So the fact is, this nonprofit business has been extremely profitable for the CEO of Mormon Stories personally, as well as for his foundation. Now it's a numbers game. The more people with a faith crisis, the more people that will watch their videos, the more people will attend their conferences, the more people will want their counseling services, and the more people will donate to their foundation. For Mormon critics and Mormon Stories specifically, the more faith they shake, the more money they make. So every honest Latter-day Saint should ask themselves this question. Are LDS critics financially motivated to see me go through a faith crisis? The answer is a resounding yes. So how do Mormon stories help someone through a faith crisis? Well, if you go to their website, you will see this on their home page banner. So what happens if I click here for support? Well, I'm brought to this page that has me view more videos. Why? Why would they have me view more videos? Because YouTube pays them for every view. Mormon Stories has about 65 million views. Based on the online source Credit Karma, the average rate for a view is uh, about 0.018 cents per view. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that means Mormon Stories has made roughly $1.1 million off of YouTube views. So it makes complete sense to send everyone they can back to watch more videos. It helps solidify a faith crisis in the member and it's significant revenue for them. They win both ways. It's also why many of their video titles are over sensationalized. So the next thing they offer on their website are workshops and conferences. I clicked on the very first workshop on their events page and was brought to this page and that is an online workshop for those struggling in their marriage. 
Well, I guess at least they acknowledge that a faith crisis can result in marriage difficulty, but notice the prices for these online courses. Now, I don't personally know how much money they make on these courses, but the prices seem pretty steep for an online course. Now, another service they offer on their web website is one-on-one -on -one coaching. The fees are, as you can see here, 25 minutes for, uh, uh, it's $125 for a 25 minute session. For a six session pa package, it's $1,300. So again, they're coming to the rescue to help people after publishing thousands of negative vid videos that facilitated the faith crisis in the first place. And last but not least, Mormon Stories links to books and other websites that are known anti-Mormon to help ensure a faith crisis in the member. These include Fawn Brody's No Man Knows My History, cult mind control books, and even anti-Christian books like Jesus Interrupted revealing the hidden contradictions in the Bible. It is unconscionable that these kinds of books are employed to, quote, promote healing for a member with questions, which is what they claim. Now, there is another newer nonprofit organization similar to Mormon Stories called Mormon Discussions, Inc. They have only been a nonprofit for a few years, but their numbers are similar to Mormon Stories when it, <clears throat> when it, when it was first starting out, and they currently they currently have over 1,400 videos on YouTube. Now the difference is Mormon Stories added another revenue stream of selling ex-Mormon products both on their website and on their YouTube channel. They are growing rapidly and in fact more than doubled their contributions from 2020 to 2021. According to their website, their CEO salary is $100,000 per year effective January 1st, 2023. Now there are still other critics on YouTube that are not yet designated as nonprofit organizations, but nonetheless produce large numbers of videos and therefore we can assume YouTube revenue. They include Exmo Lex, Zelf on the Shelf, Cults to Consciousness, Nuance Ho, and others. In each case, in addition to being paid for videos, they solicit donations aggressively and or sell ex-Mormon products and in this case, some of which are extremely offensive. They're mocking our temple ceremony and are, are just very bad. While some of them may have other reasons for being critics, in every case, money is certainly a contributing factor. So to summarize, it would be considered unethical for a doctor to intentionally infect a patient with a disease in order to provide treatment and collect a fee. Yet LDS critics expose members to literally thousands of videos containing misinformation or assumptions about the LDS church and its history only to come to the rescue by offering activities that further increase their own revenue. As I said at the beginning, while critics are also individuals and children of God, we have to acknowledge that they are creating thousands of negative videos replete with half-truths and bad assumptions to cause or perpetuate a faith crisis then exploiting the members they impact by making money off of the resulting emotional trauma. It is the absolute definition of unethical behavior. In the words of Neil A. Maxwell, studying the church through the eyes of its defectors is like interviewing Judas to understand Jesus. So the choice is ours. We can spend months or years researching the hundreds of accusations of our critics to sort out fact from fiction or we can understand what the critics are really trying to do and why, then simply dismiss their accusations out of hand. So this brings us back to where it has always been, the most solid foundation we can gain about the gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't come from critics or apologists. It comes from God himself through the Holy Ghost. He is, after all, the source of all truth. I invite you to see more detail by going to www.answeringldscritics.com.